Hey everyone, so in this episode we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a product as I mentioned in the last episode. So if we go into the shop UI and go into our index page, you will see that our template includes razor pages. So go ahead and open both of these up. And in our CSHTML, let's delete all of this stuff. All right. So what we want to do is we just want to post a simple product to our backend and save it to the database. Okay, so first of all, let's create our uh, view model. So public class uh, product view model. And let's quickly go into our domain and copy these three properties. Okay. And let's create a prop and let's call it product view model and let's call it product okay and on top of here what you want to do is type in bind property so what bind property does in uh, razor views is it will basically say right this right here whatever we bind is our main model okay so if we go ahead and type input, remove all of this, and we type in ASP4, we will be able to access this product straight away without referencing our model. So, product dot name. All right. So let's make a label and let's call it name. Let's copy this a few times. Description. Description. Value. Value. All right. Uh, wrap it to a, in a form. And just give it a method of post. Okay, and another input of type submit, name, we don't need name, and just save product. Okay. So now we got our little form. Let's go ahead and use this form in our Razor backend. So public I action result on post and we want to return direct to page index okay so difference between redirect to action and redirect to page redirect to action you use it in controllers and you redirect to an action redirect to pages for razor pages and you do it to redirect to a razor page okay so Let's go ahead, put a breakpoint here, and see what we get. Let's uh, run this, press F5. So after loading up, uh, get rid of this one, and uh, let's uh, just make something up real quick. So test, test, uh, and zero, 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 save product. Right, so we're in a post, so press Control Q. This will put you to the search window in your top right corner, and type in watch right and what you want to do is you want to open your watch one and then here you can type in product okay and basically this right here is what we can use in this scope so this locals here the ones you can access is your scope for is, is basically this scope. So let, let's just quickly see what's here. You can see our HTTP context, our model state, and uh, the, the is valid. Yep, it's valid because we don't, haven't specified anything here. So just a few more things. Values, do we have anything here? 
you can see all this stuff that represents our um, our view model here that which we used bind property on so that's basically what bind property does you don't have to specify your model here which you post you can see it that it just brings it up automatically now what we want to do is we want to add this uh, to our database so how we do that is if we go into our application and we look at this create product you can see we have this do method right where we pass just some uh, attributes uh, to create a product All right so let's take this class create product and uh, let's create it here okay so after creating this product let's do do and uh, let's pass in our stuff so let's see what what do we put in here id name and so when we create we don't really need id right but we do want our decimal value okay so product dot uh name product dot description and product dot value okay so after doing this it should add it okay so we don't need id here sorry it should add it to the database but we're not calling the save function yet so we're gonna go ahead and do that so let's go to our context go to save changes async uh, let's call await on this because this is asynchronous and we can call this async task there we go so task if you don't specify anything in these curly brackets like bull or int this equals to something like a void task right so task is void so you don't have to specify a type okay so now we have to call we have to make this asynchronous as well because our do is async so let's go wait so one more thing that we need to do is if we look in this method we need to pass in our database context so let's create a constructor and uh, let's say application db context ctx and uh, let's just make ctx equals ctx right and let's just pass it here so let's run this again and let's see what happens let's quickly put a breakpoint here So I'll test here and let's put 1.1 see if this works yeah so you can see that the value that we get this is why we want to use decimals is 1.01 .01. uh, test description and uh, test name cool let's uh, add this um, product to the transaction and after we add it to the transaction we want to save it okay exit the method and return to page index and we're back at page index with the empty form now let's take a look at the database my shop tables products view data and there it is however our value here is uh, zero 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 the reason for that is in our create product we have forgotten to add value to our transaction so let's go ahead and add value here so right now it should work you can test it if you'd like but this will be it for this episode thanks very much for watching subscribe like if you'd like to see more and uh, you want to support my channel if you have any questions as always leave them in the comments i'll try to answer them all and see you in the next episode